The learning objectives for this module will cover everything needed to work with recorded video within the Avigilon High Definition Surveillance System. We'll cover the general viewing of recorded video using the timeline and playback controls, how to create bookmarks, as well as searching and exporting recorded video. The Avigilon Control Center client is divided into five different areas that will be referenced throughout Avigilon University training modules. The menu bar, the toolbar, the system explorer, the timeline, and the workspace. Previously, Module 1 showed you how to start viewing video from a camera on an image panel. By default, the video will always be started in live mode first. When viewing in live mode, the image panel will have a blue highlight around the perimeter, and the icon on the view will indicate if the view is currently a live or recorded view. To switch a view from live to recorded, click the recorded button in the toolbar, or right click on the image panel and select recorded. A recorded image panel will have a green highlight around the perimeter, and a recorded view will show a green icon. You can combine live and recorded views from the same camera, by adding the camera to two separate image panels, like we have here, and setting one image panel to recorded by right-clicking on the image panel. Now that you're viewing recorded video, it's important to understand the timeline. The timeline is below the workspace and shows the history for all recorded video. If an area is solid blue, it indicates a period where video has been recorded but no motion or other event was detected associated with that camera. Any period indicated in red shows an event that has been detected for that camera. Each camera is listed on the left, with its associated timeline listed horizontally out to the right. You can use the controls at the very bottom left to zoom the timeline in and out, and can also use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out of the timeline the same way as you can within an image panel. When viewing recorded video, the vertical red bar on the timeline will always indicate the current point in time being viewed. There are several different ways the time being viewed can be changed. The simplest is via the playback controls available below the System Explorer. Here, you can click the button to begin playing the video, use the available slider to set the speed and direction of playback, and click the pause button to pause recorded video. The two arrow keys available here allow you to move forward and back by a single frame. Also available to change the point in time being viewed are the jump controls available at the left of the timeline. The controls next to each camera will move automatically between events for a given camera. The jump controls above these will move forward and backwards by a fixed amount of time, based on the level of zoom in the timeline. Finally, the top set of jump controls allows you to move forward and backward by whole days. Next, another powerful tool for reviewing video is the ability to click and drag with the left mouse button within the timeline to rapidly update the location of the red time indicator and update the point in time being viewed. Similar to a jog or shuttle style playback control, it allows for very rapidly moving through large periods of recorded video. Finally, you can also click the calendar icon next to the playback controls to jump to a specific date and time in the recorded video. Once you have identified an incident within the recorded video, you can easily create a bookmark associated with that video by right-clicking in the timeline and selecting Add Bookmark, or by clicking the Add Bookmark icon next to the playback controls. When editing a bookmark, you can click and drag the black bars on the left and right of the bookmark in the timeline to adjust the start and finish time for the bookmark, or enter a start and finish time manually using the calendar interface on the Edit Bookmark dialog. Next, enter a name for the bookmark, and in the description field, enter any additional associated information about the bookmark. The contents of the name and description can be searched later using the Event Search interface. Finally, select whether or not you want the bookmarked video protected using the checkbox. When protected, bookmarked video will not be erased as it becomes the oldest recorded video. It's important to remember, Protected video will take up hard disk space and will reduce the duration of stored video for all cameras. Click OK to complete the creation of the bookmark. Once created, bookmarks will appear in yellow in the timeline. Clicking on a bookmark with the left mouse button allows you to review all the information about the bookmark, as well as select to export, edit, or delete the bookmark. Next, we will discuss the three general types of search that can be performed on recorded video. Event, Pixel, and Thumbnail Search. The search interface can be opened in the workspace by clicking the search button in the toolbar or selecting search from tools in the menu bar. First, let's cover performing an event search. Click on event search inside the workspace to start the event search. An event search allows you to search for all motion and digital input events as well as bookmarks for selected cameras across multiple servers. To begin with, define the timeline you wish to search over using the calendar interface in the time range to search area or by clicking and dragging the black bars in the timeline. Next, Define which cameras to search for events by selecting the associated checkboxes. If searching across multiple servers, select all the cameras you wish to search in this area, regardless of which server they are connected to. 
Next, select which events to search for, and enter any text to search for within bookmarks in the Text to Match field. Finally, click Start Search to complete the search. All search results will be displayed in the table below. The search results will detail the type, server, camera, and source of the event, as well as the start time and duration. You can click on any column header to sort the listed results by that column. As you select individual search results with the left mouse button, the timeline will automatically zoom to that event, and it will be highlighted in the timeline in green. On the right-hand side, additional information about the event is displayed, along with options to export the event or perform a pixel search on the event. At the bottom of the right-hand side is a button to allow you to export the text information about all search results to a file. Once clicked, you will be prompted where to save the file. Next, let's cover how to perform a pixel search. A pixel search is a targeted search to identify the motion events where motion occurred in only a specified area within a camera's field of view. Click on Pixel Search inside the workspace to start a pixel search. The first step of a pixel search is identifying which areas of the field of view you want to search for motion events. By default, the entire field of view will be highlighted in green, indicating the area that will be searched. The controls above allow you to specify which regions to search for motion events. Click Clear All to remove the default area. You can then use the Set Area tool and the left mouse button to click and drag rectangular areas you wish to search within the field of view. The Draw tool can also be used to draw lines or more detailed areas you wish to search within. Finally, the Clear Area tool can be used with the left mouse button to click and drag to highlight areas you wish to clear and remove from the area searched for motion events. When using these tools to specify the region to search for motion events, the same controls as covered in Module 1 are available to digitally zoom and pan within the image. The next step in a pixel search is to define the timeline you wish to search using the same tools as covered for an event search, either using the calendar interface or by clicking and dragging the black bars in the timeline. If desired, you can adjust the threshold used when searching for specific motion events. The threshold defines the size of area that needs the change to be identified as a motion event. Lowering the threshold will identify motion events with changes to smaller portions of the field of view, while raising it will identify only those events where larger portions of the field of view detected motion. Finally, click Start Search to complete the search. All search results will be displayed in the table below. The search results will detail the time and duration of the event. You can click on any column header to sort the listed results by that column. As you select individual search results with the left mouse button, the timeline will automatically zoom to that event and it will be highlighted in the timeline in green. On the right hand side, additional information about the event is displayed, along with a button to export the event. At the bottom right hand side is a button to allow you to export the text information about all search results to a file. Once clicked, you will be prompted where to save that file. The third type of general recorded video search we'll cover is performing a thumbnail search. A thumbnail search allows you to review thumbnail-sized frames of video from within a specified range of time to rapidly identify the point in time when a change in the scene occurred. Thumbnail search is especially powerful when searching video that has a lot of activity, and a pixel search is unable to find the specific change or incident in the video. Click on Thumbnail Search inside the workspace to start a thumbnail search. To start a thumbnail search, select the checkbox for the camera you wish to view thumbnails from on the right-hand side of the screen. By default, the thumbnail search will collect thumbnails for the entire field of view. If you wish to crop the size of the thumbnails collected, you can adjust the size of the green highlighted area by grabbing any of the four corners with the left mouse button and resizing the area you wish to view. You can also use the left mouse button to click and drag to adjust the location of the highlighted area you wish to search. The next step is to define the timeline you wish to search using the same tools as covered previously for the other types of searches either using the calendar interface or by clicking and dragging the black bars in the timeline. Next, click Start Search to complete the search. The thumbnail search results will be displayed as a series of frames of video at equal intervals between the specified start and finish time of the search. Each thumbnail is labeled in the timeline and highlighted when selected. By default, medium-sized thumbnails are collected. If you wish to search again with larger or smaller thumbnails, you can change the size of thumbnails and click Search Again. The size of the thumbnails will define the number of thumbnails displayed. If you search with smaller thumbnails, you will get more thumbnail frames at equal intervals between the specified start and finish of the search displayed on the results page. If you've identified a relevant incident, you can click on the thumbnail with the left mouse button and click Open in View to open a new view with that camera at that point in time. From there, you can review the incident in more detail and add a bookmark or export. 
If the initial search didn't identify the incident or change accurately enough, you can click the Step In button or double-click on a thumbnail to have an additional search automatically started displaying thumbnails between the thumbnail before and after the selected thumbnail. This allows you to drill into the thumbnail search results and more accurately pinpoint the change or incident you're looking for. Once identified, you can select the thumbnail and click Open in View to launch a new view with that camera at that point in time for further review. That covers the three general types of searches that can be performed on recorded video. The other specific searches, like alarm, POS transaction, and license plate search, will be covered in different modules. Our final topic for this module will be exporting recorded video. Once you've used the timeline or searching to identify and bookmark an incident in recorded video, exporting allows you to easily share that video with law enforcement or anyone who requires access to the video outside of the Vigilant HD surveillance system. The simplest export is a snapshot of an individual frame of video. This can be done at any time on live or recorded video by clicking the camera icon in the top right of the image panel or by right clicking within the image panel and selecting save snapshot. Either of these options will launch the export interface in the workspace to export a single snapshot from that camera. When exporting, you can select multiple different formats for exporting the recorded video. The default and recommended format is always the native of Vigilon format. When exported in this format, the video is maintained in its original compression format and can be played back in the Vigilon Control Center player software, where it can be authenticated against tampering and re-exported into other formats if required. To complete the export in native format, simply click Start Export. If desired, you can select the checkbox to export the installer for Control Center player along with the exported video. When exporting into other formats, additional options can be set that affect how the image is processed when exported. For JPEG exports, you can adjust the amount of compression applied to the image. For JPEG, TIFF, or PNG format, you have options to change the resolution of the exported image. This will resize the exported image, discarding any details captured by the full resolution, but reducing the resulting file size of the exported image. For all exports into other formats, you can also select which overlays you want embedded into the exported image, and can click Display Adjustments to have the contrast or gamma adjusted on the exported image. Also, whenever you're exporting a snapshot directly to a printer or PDF, you can click Add Export Notes to add any additional text you want to include along with the image when exported. Another option available when exporting to other formats than native is the ability to change the image region exported. This allows you to crop the exported image to only a specified portion of the image by adjusting the green highlighted region. This can be done by clicking and dragging any of the four corners with the left mouse button. You can also click and drag the center of the highlighted area with the left mouse button to move the highlighted area within the image. Once you have identified the portion of the image you wish to export, click OK. If you wish to export the video from a complete incident rather than just a snapshot, you can click either the export icon in the toolbar or select export from the file menu to launch the full export interface in the workspace. When exporting a longer clip of video, you have the same options for formats as with a snapshot, with the additional option for AVI export. Similar to a snapshot, the recommended export format is the native Avigilon format, playable in the Avigilon Control Center player. When exporting a clip, you have additional options to adjust the exported image rate to either a half, quarter, or eighth of the recorded video, or you can specify a specific time-lapse interval. Also available when exporting a clip is the option to have the export automatically broken into separate files by size for transfer to CD or DVD. When exporting a clip to a series of JPEG, TIFF, or PNG images, you have the same options available for adjusting compression, resolution, image region, and overlays as when performing the export of a single frame snapshot. When exporting a clip to AVI video format, an additional option is available to specify the encoder used to encode the AVI video. By default, the VC1 encoder is included, since it is tailored for higher resolution AVI encoding. Once you have chosen your format and options, you can click and drag the black bars in the timeline, or use the calendar interface to specify the start and end time for the export, and click Start Export to be prompted for the location to save the exported file. Thank you for your attention. You should now have a complete understanding of working with recorded video within the Vigilon HD surveillance system to identify, bookmark, search, and export recorded video.